The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. It was this boy, his name was Jordan, he lived in Baltimore. And he came from an irreligious home. Not just irreligious, they really didn't know much about anything. And elementary school was okay, but the high school in Baltimore where he lived was a very, very bad neighborhood. So his parents decided that they're going to send him right across the street from where they live with a Catholic school. They said, they're not from anywhere, they're not even from, they, they have no connection to Judaism. We'll send them to the Catholic school. Fantastic education, safe, no drugs, no, no, no nothing, right? Great place. We'll get a great education, and we'll send them to college. So this boy, this Jewish boy, Jordan, comes to school, and he's in ninth grade, and he sits down with his whole class, all Christians. And the priest, who's the head of the school, walks in to the class to welcome the class. He says, good morning, boys. By the way, anyone Jewish in this class? Jordan's like, looking around, he's like, there's no way I'm saying one word. <laughs> so he goes, okay, I guess not, and he walks out. At the end of the day, teacher gets a note, please send Jordan to my office. Now, Jordan had a Jewish last name, so the priest was a little bit suspecting that he might be a Jew. So Jordan sits down in front of the priest, and I guess in a Catholic school, it's just pretty, pretty scary to be called in to the head priest's office. And he sits down and he's thinking to himself, oh my gosh, they found out I'm a Jew. They're going to hang me up. They're going to burn me on the stake. I don't know what they're going to do with me. He's like, you heard all these stories, right? Spanish Inquisition. I can't believe it. My parents sent me here. I'm done. I'm finished. And the priest looks at him and says, Jordan, I want the truth. Are you Jewish? He's like, yes. He says, do you know how to read Hebrew? He's like, no, no, I don't know how to read Hebrew. He did it. He says, good. Every Thursday, I want you in my office for an hour. I'm going to teach you how to read the Aleph pages. Jordan's like, what? I want to teach you how to read Hebrew. Okay, you don't mess with the priest. So Thursday, he comes to, to the room. He takes out the Aleph Bina, and he starts to teach him Aleph pages. And in ninth grade, Jordan learns the Aleph pages. Taught his Rebbe is a priest. And in second grade, and in, in tenth grade, he goes the first day and he says to Jordan, okay, now that we know how to read, we're going to learn Chomish. So you come every Thursday for an hour, we're going to learn Chomish. And he teaches them Chomish. And in eleventh grade, he teaches them Mishnais. And in twelfth grade, he says, I can't teach you Talmud. I don't know Talmud. So... There's a school called United Talmudical Academy of Baltimore, and they have a lot of rabbis there, and they have a lot of young boys there. After class, I want you to go there and tell one of the boys that you want to that you're Jewish and you want to learn Talmud. The priest tells him to do that. He does it. He goes to Baltimore Yeshiva, true story, and he tells them, "I'm in a Catholic school, and my priest wants me to learn tomorrow." <laughs> and they're like, "We're showing him a or well, just tomorrow." Like, well, you know, what's he telling you? So he gets a chavus and he starts to learn Gemara. And he graduates this Catholic school. And he just falls in love with Gemara. And he stays in Baltimore Yeshiva. And it becomes about Shuva. And he's there in the base Medrash. And he goes to the Smicha. And he becomes a Rav. This true story. <laughs> now, when he gets to the Smicha, he wants to talk for So he goes to his Rebbe, the priest. <laughs> and he comes to church. He comes to the school. And he knocks on the door. And, and there's Father Giuseppe. That was his name. His name, Father Giuseppe. And he sits down and he says, Father Giuseppe, I'd like to tell you what happened today. He says, yes. He says, I became a rabbi. And Father Giuseppe says, Mazel tov. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for a long time. So Jordan says, but Father, are you Jewish? He says, no, I'm Catholic. He says, I don't understand. Why did you teach me how to read and told me how much in order? What do you mean you've been waiting? For? What's going on here? So Giuseppe says, sit down up, listen to this. He says, many years ago, I'm on sabbatical. Every 20 years, they get off a year. I decided on sabbatical to go to Israel. So I went to Israel, and I have the year off. When I went to Israel, I figured I'd go for a month. And the other priests were telling me, if you want to see the Jews at their best, go Friday night to the Western Wall. They dance, they, shling, they sing Kabbalah, they didn't tell them that, right? And the bishop says, on one corner, and Kabbalah is on the other corner. And it's very, very beautiful. So he said, okay. He dressed in regular clothing. He goes to, to the Kaisal Friday night and he watches all the dancing. It's very beautiful. And now he's ready to leave. Everyone's finished down and they're all leaving. So he turns around to leave. 
Rameer Shastol, all of Shalom, standing there. And he doesn't know that this guy is not Jewish. He dressed as a regular guy. And he says, okay, you five, you ten, in the old city, you're going to go to the Schwartzes, you over there, come on. And he's like, well, what is this all about? The feast? What is all, he's going, they're going to eat, supper, dinner. He says, okay, we have to investigate what Jews eat Friday night, right? Yeah, so he's like, he's already so short and he didn't know what to say. So he follows them. And they all go to these people's house in the old city. And they sit down and they have this meal. And this priest is sitting there. Nobody knows he's not Jewish, right? He's dressed in regular clothing. He's sitting there and just watching. Chicken soup and they default the fish and everything. Anyway, finally they finish. It's very beautiful. And he goes over to the lady who's running the house. And he says to her, that potato thing, that little square thing that you gave me on my plate, what is that called? And she goes, it's potato kumbo. He goes, potato kumbo? She goes, not Google, that's not potato, it's potato kumbo. He says, well, I have to tell you, lady, I have never eaten anything that delicious. So like a good Jewish woman, what does she say? Ah! You think that's something? Tomorrow for lunch, we have kumbo, kishka, and chulent. And my chulent is the best chulent in the whole old city. So it would be an honor for us if you would come back. He says, you're going to have this potato stuff tomorrow? Plenty of it. And it's overnight kolo. <laughs> and that's not kolo. Okay. He comes the next day. He comes the next day. He comes the next day. And he has his kitchen and his kolo and everything. He's having a great time. But the man of the house, that after benching, he says, before anybody goes, there's a deal. If you come to lunch, after lunch, we go to, or- we go to Eisha Torah. And there's a rabbi, Noah Weinberg, and he gives a half an hour class to everyone that was by my meal. Okay, this the guy gave you to eat, you gotta go. So they all go, and this priest is like, okay, and then for the quarter, I'll check this out. <laughs> and he goes to this shir, Noah gives this shir. And this, this is an educated man, this, this priest, and he's listening to Noah, and he's just blown away by this rabbi. And he's like, if this is what they study in this school, I want to study this too. So without telling anyone that he's a priest, he joins Isha Torah for a year. <laughs> and he learns. I read Hebrew, Chomish, Mishnah, and he's up to Gemara, and his year sabbatical is over. So he tells his Chavrusa that I'm going back to America because I have to go back to America. And the Chavrusa is like, you don't understand, you, you have come so far in one year, you have to stay. And he's like, no, I can't. Now, everyone in Isha Torah knows that when he got, everyone liked, wanted to leave after a year, he sent them to Rav Noah, Weinberg, Rav Shalom, and he talked to them for 10 minutes, and they're there for life. <laughs> well, the Chavusa said, well, you can't leave without saying goodbye to the rabbi, figuring Noah will get him to stay. And he takes this guy up to the rabbi, to Rav Noah. Noah knows where he is. He says, what's going on? Where are you going? He says, I have to leave. I have to go home. He says, are you going to go home? You, you, you came here a year ago. You're already learning the Shnayis with, with Bartolura and Tracy Yantiv. You're on such a high level. Another year, you know what you're going to be in Gamaro? You have to stay. He says, Holy Rabbi, I have to tell you something. <laughs> My sabbatical is over. And Noah says, Sabbatical? Sabbatical from what? He goes, Sabbatical from the church. <laughs> Noah says, What do you mean, sabbatical from the church? He says, Rabbi, I'm a priest. Noah says, You're a priest? And you sat in my school? And lived the lie for a year. You ate my food. You lived with my boys. You went to my classes. Such dishonesty from a priest. I will never forgive you. And the priest looks at her, at Rabbi Noah and he says, I'm so sorry, Rabbi, but the kugel, and then, and then I came to your class. I couldn't step out. He says, there's no excuse for dishonesty, especially from a priest. You will never be forgiven for what you've done. Now, you know, I'm the way a priest is going home, never forgive him. <laughs> so, Rabbi, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, please forgive me. He says, There's only one way you'll ever get forgiveness. You lived a lie and you came to my school and you learned how to read and you learned Chomish and you learned Mishnah. The only time you'll ever be forgiven, if ever a Jewish boy comes to your school, and you use what you learned in my school, and you teach it to him, I'll forgive you. So Giuseppe, Father Giuseppe, tells Jordan, for 10 years, every ninth grade, I was looking for a Jewish boy that I could teach. 
I was looking for forgiveness. And now that you're a rabbi, I am finally forgiven. It's the, it's the message in the story. The message in the story is, ladies, men, you don't have to be a care of specialist with classes how to talk to people. What brought Jordan from a Christian school to become a rabbi? If I told you who he was today, every woman and every man in this room would fall off the chip. One of the biggest and I mean the biggest in Kirov today is Jordan. And I used to say his name, and he asked me not to anymore because he has children in Shidduch, and he doesn't want the whole thing. No, he doesn't want it. He was going to Catholic school. It's not going to do him any good. So I don't say his name, but some people in this room probably know who he is. He's one of the biggest people in the Kirov world today. And when he got married, the guys in Baltimore knew that he wasn't a religious kid, and they asked him, who made you from? <laughs> And at his wedding, he pointed to the priest, because the priest was invited to the wedding, and the cross the top, and he said, this might sound very weird, but that's my Rebbe. <laughs> What's the goddess of the story, ladies and gentlemen? What brought Jordan from the lowest tomb in the world, a Catholic school, become one of the greatest speakers, and one of the, that's not me, by the way. <laughs> ah, my name's not Jordan. And I didn't grow up in Baltimore. I don't know any father just said that. <laughs> From the lowest place, Smith like yeah. Baltimore Yeshiva, and be a car of Jews, ladies, a piece of potato kugel. A silly little piece of potato kugel. She didn't know Kirov. She didn't make a whole big speech. She, every single Shabbos, makes food for people she doesn't know. They're not her family. They're strangers. They come from the Western Wall. They sit in her house. They eat her food. They're part of her family. Every single Friday night, she's not talking. She's walking. She's doing something. When you're doing something, Hashem can take a piece of potato kobold and take a Jewish kid from a Christian school and turn him into one of the biggest people in care of. It's action, not words, that make things happen. This is a 100% true story. If you don't believe me, you can go to Israel and ask Jeff Seidel. If Jeff Seidel is now at the Kosel, Jeff, do you know the story of Rav Noah Weinberg and that priest? And he will tell you, absolutely, it's 100% true. I know the story. But Kayach, of just doing something, our job is to do. Hashem can take something and turn it into the biggest miracle, but if you don't do something, you just talk, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but nitzak, but nitzak, but nitzak, but nitzak, because you're both of the what are you talking so much? Do something. Turn to Klai and tell him, go, get out of your chair and do something, even if it's making a piece of potato. Godless. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.